Good morning, Northwest. I uh, hope that you're doing good today, and I really, I really mean that. I know there's a lot of stuff going on. I know there's a lot of uncertainty uh, in our lives today, in our world today. And I suppose that's probably one of the most difficult uh, situations that we find ourselves in is, is the fact of everything being so uncertain. About the only thing that we're certain of today is the fact that there is nothing that we can be certain in. And that's kind of where the uh, first disciples, they found themselves on that very first uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, and I, and I want to go back to that. I want to go back to John chapter 20 for just a couple of minutes uh, and, and also make reference back to Luke chapter 24. And then we're going to move on to something else because this changes everything. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything thing and it changes everything in your life in my life uh, you, you remember those first disciples on that first resurrection sunday none of them believed that jesus had been resurrected not a single one of them uh, and even that sunday evening that very first easter sunday night we find her, we, John says that the disciples, that they were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. They were uncertain. Here's the disciples of Jesus. They're so afraid. They're so full of fear and panic and anxiety, a doubt. All of these things, just like the flood in on us today because of the uncertainty that surrounds our situation and our lives today, uh, we, we, we feel like these very first disciples, even the fact that we're kind of behind locked doors with the stay at home, they were afraid. There was so much uncertainty with their lives. They had no idea what they were going to do next. Uh, they didn't know whether or not they were going to be alive uh, the next day even. They didn't know when that knock on the door may come and it would be them being arrested and turned over to the Romans just like the Jewish leaders did with Jesus and had him crucified. Uh, their futures. They had no idea what they were going to do. Just like in our lives today, their lives were full of so much uncertainty. And that's why I believe that the resurrection speaks so powerfully into our lives today. Because John continued in John chapter 20, verse 19, that, that suddenly here's Jesus. He, he's standing right there in the middle of them. He didn't come through a, a closed door, a locked door. He just came right through the door, uh, through a wall. He didn't have to open a door. And he's standing right there in the middle of them with his body. And we talked about that last week where they thought he was a ghost. And he said, here, just touch my body. If you can touch my body, you'll know that I'm not a ghost. And, and they still didn't really believe him. And he said, J you got anything to eat? And, and so they gave him some food, and he sat there and he ate the food because he wanted to show them that I'm not a ghost. There is no way that a ghost can eat food. So here they have the resurrected body of Jesus standing right in the middle of them. And John says that they were filled with joy after they talked with Jesus and realized that this is the resurrected body of Jesus that we are touching, that we are seeing, that we are with. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Nothing else had changed. Their circumstances had not changed. They were still in that house, still behind those locked doors, still not knowing if the Jewish leaders were going to turn them over 
to the Roman soldiers. Nothing changed. Their circumstance had not changed. But yet, just the fact that the resurrected Jesus was there, it filled them with joy. The same joy that you and I can have today regardless of what the circumstances are around us. And the challenging question that I would like to ask you today, and, and, and I've thought about for my own self, do I have joy right now? I have no idea what's going to happen. None of us have any idea, especially as you get older like myself, if I may come down with the coronavirus and die. What might happen if I got sick with it? What's going to happen with the economy? What's going to happen with jobs? What's going to happen with, with anything? How are we going to make house payments? How are we going to make car payments? You, you know, even the food at the grocery stores, is food going to be there? and some of the other needed things that we have to have. So how, how do we have this kind of joy? And Peter, and if you want to turn over to 1 Peter chapter 1, and this is where we're going to close out at, in 1 Peter chapter 1. Because see, Peter experienced the resurrected Jesus it changed everything in his life. And now here's Peter writing to a, to a group of disciples in Asia Minor, which is modern-day Turkey. Most of these are Gentile Christians, Gentile converts to, to Jesus Christ. They're not, they're not Jews. They're not, they weren't the, the nation of Israel. These are, are those that were the outsiders at that time. And, and now they're being converted to Jesus Christ, but they're undergoing severe persecution in the Roman Empire because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Their lives were so uncertain. Uh, their very life was uncertain. They didn't know if they would be put to death for simply being a follower of Jesus Christ. But also the fact that they couldn't get jobs for the fact that they were Christians. The unions and the Roman Empire, they would have these gods that, that you would have to bow down and you would have to worship these gods of these particular trade unions that you might want to be a part of so that you could practice your trade. And if you didn't bow down and recognize that particular false god, which was no god at all, as God, you didn't get hired. They would not hire you. Matter of fact, they would mark you. And you wouldn't get hired anywhere. So they, had, they couldn't get jobs. And even if they opened up their own business, they were boycotted for the fact that they were Christians. And many of them, that led to, 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 to money issues, that led to food issues, that led to so many concerns and uncertainties in their life. And so here now Peter is writing to these Christians 30 years after the resurrection of Jesus. And look what he says to them. He says in verse 3, and I'm just going to read it, and then we're just going to kind of go briefly through it again. But he says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again. Why? Because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance. An inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, 
God is protecting you by His power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love Him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. The resurrection changes everything. It changed everything for those very first disciples on that very first Resurrection Sunday. It changes everything for these believers of Jesus Christ in A.D. 63, 30 years after his resurrection. It still changes everything, even though their circumstances do not change. And these words still ring true for you and me today. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything. No matter how uncertain anything else is, the resurrection of Jesus brings certainty to your life and to my life. And so some of the things that I want to just challenge us with a little bit. And we just need to, I mean, we need to be thinking about the resurrection every single day. We're going to be taking the Lord's Supper again uh, at the conclusion here. But you know, for me, I don't just take the Lord's Supper on Sunday mornings whenever we gather together at our location at Northwest. Anytime I get together with our believers out at Galena Park, we take the Lord's Supper together. It, if, if it's on Wednesday, if it's on Sunday evening, if it's some other time during the week that, that we get together like that, we celebrate it because we, we just want to bring honor to Jesus and never forget the resurrection because it does change everything. Without the resurrection, there isn't a church we don't have a church and then believe in the resurrection. We have a body of believers because of the resurrection. I don't believe the Bible. Or I don't believe the resurrection because the Bible tells me so. I believe the Bible because of the resurrection. The resurrection causes me then to go back and to realize, you know what? Man, this is real right here. The resurrection is the foundation for every aspect of our lives. And so even when we find ourselves in situations like we are in right now, man, we're believers. We got the resurrection. So the question is, are we praising God? He said, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you praising God every single day? as the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, because of our God's great mercy, and mercy is God withholding that which we deserve. God withholds that which we deserve because of what Jesus did on that cross. And he says, man, you've been born again. You have new life. We have a brand new life because of Jesus, because of God's mercy. 
brand new life. Are you living that life now? Am I living that brand new life now or am I stuck in the past? Am I stuck in some things in my past, in my life, that just keep weighing me down? And I'm going to encourage you, man, forget that. Because of Jesus, because of His resurrection, because of what Jesus did on that cross, and because of His resurrection, He says, man, God's mercy gives us a brand new life. And even what we're going through right now, it's so easy to get stuck and bogged down in what we're dealing with right now and let that bring us all sorts of anxiety, all sorts of worry, all sorts of fear and, and panic and doubt and, and just rob us of joy. But he says, man, I've given you new life because God raised Jesus from the dead. He says, so now we live with great expectation. We live with great expectation. And I want to say to my brothers and my sisters, are you living with great expectation today? Yeah, there's all sorts of things that are going on around us. I mean, even before this pandemic hit, dealing with sick parents or sick mates that maybe. You know, we don't know how much longer they have on this earth. There's some of us that are that are that have been dealing with relationship issues. There's some of us dealing with financial issues long before this pandemic hit, job issues long before this pandemic hit. You name it. I mean, it, it, it's been there. But don't you see what the resurrection does for us? That no matter what circumstance we find ourselves in and how uncertain the future looks, he says right now, man, we live with great expectation. Why? Because we have a priceless inheritance. We have an inheritance. You have an inheritance. I have an inheritance. As believers in Jesus Christ, we have an inheritance. See, an inheritance signifies what? It signifies, uh, in most cases, family, because an inheritance is passed down uh, from, from, uh, from a parent to, to children. And so, and so that's what we are. I mean, we're children of God. And because we are children of God, the Father of Jesus Christ, who is also our Father, we have a great expectation because we have an inheritance that you can't even put a price on that's kept in heaven for you. Think about it. And, and Peter believed in heaven. Peter believed in heaven not because he, he learned it in Sunday school. But it was because of the resurrected Jesus he believed in heaven. Don't ever doubt heaven. If if, and I, I mean, I believe with all of my heart because of the, the proof is there that Jesus Christ was resurrected. So I believe without a shadow of a doubt in heaven. And he tells me that in heaven, there is in heaven, my safekeeping is my inheritance. It is pure. It is undefiled. It's beyond the reach of, of change and decay. There's nothing that can get that inheritance. This pandemic has wreaked havoc with our lives, with our world. Not just America, but all over the world with, with people's health, with, with jobs, uh, with 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 uh, the the food supply, with the stock market, 
I mean, there is nothing for sure. But what is for sure is that you and I, as believers in Jesus Christ, we have an inheritance that will never, ever fade or decay or change in any way. And what proves that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he says that you and I, that we're going to receive this salvation, this deliverance, when Jesus is revealed on that last day for everyone to see. No matter what happens today, man, my eyes aren't on just what's going on around me today. Man, I've got my eyes fixed on heaven. That's what Paul told the uh, Colossian uh, Christians, and I just thought about this verse as I was, as I was speaking to us right now. But, but Paul, he wrote to the Colossian Christians in chapter 3, verse 1. He says, since you, have been, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. He says, you set your mind, you set your eyes on the things above. You set your eyes on heaven where Christ is sitting. How do we make it through this pandemic? How do we make it through these uncertain times? It's we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus knowing that we have an inheritance waiting for us that God is protecting with his own power. That's what Peter tells us. Man, God is protecting it with his own power and it will never change. It will never decay. It will never lose value. And we are going to receive that on that last day when Jesus Christ is revealed. That's why we live with high expectations. And that's why he says, you be truly glad. He's telling these Christians who, who, who in this first century, Peter is talking to people just like in situations like we're in now, not knowing what is going to happen in the future. They have no idea. Complete uncertainty. But he says, you can be truly glad. So be truly glad. And I want to encourage us as we're going through this pandemic together, and even with all of the uncertainties that are out there. And I'm, I'm not, please understand, I, under, I know, I know what it means to lose a job. Yes, as a preacher, I have been fired before. And not knowing where I was going to go next. What a door God was going to open next. A lot of uncertainty. So I understand how you feel. But I want to tell you right now, the thing that got me through this thing and the thing that got my family through this time in our life was our faith in Jesus. It was the resurrection of Jesus that approved everything that I've been talking about all of, all of the time that I've been preaching full time. Because he says, man, there is wonderful joy ahead. Even though you must endure trials for a little while. But these trials show our faith to be genuine. How's your faith holding up? Now that's just between you and God. And, and, you know, one of the things about being in our homes by ourselves like this, I mean, you can sit down with your family and talk with your family about this or talk with, if, if you're just living with one other person, talk with, with them about it. But if you're by yourself, maybe you have a friend or a brother or sister in Christ that you can, that you can talk to about your faith. Is your faith remaining strong? Is your faith genuine? See, I want my faith to be found genuine, not lacking anything, so that when I stand before Jesus on that day, he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. He says, when your faith remains strong through many trials, 
it brings much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. When your faith shows itself to be genuine and strong, enduring. Man, it brings you glory and honor and praise. But it also brings Him glory and honor and praise because it shows Him to be true. And I love this. You see, these disciples, 30 years after the resurrection of Jesus, they had never seen these particular Christians, they had never seen Jesus. They're in a part of the world that, that they didn't see Jesus in the flesh. But Peter had no doubt, man, you love him, per se. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him. And you, re you rejoice with an inexpressible joy. You and I are in the same situation as these believers that Peter is writing to in 1 Peter. There's none of us we've ever seen Jesus in the flesh. But don't you see that the resurrection is what caused them to love him? To trust him? even though they had never seen him. And it's what brought them an inexpressible joy, even in the circumstances that they found themselves in, living under Nero in the Roman Empire. Do you trust him? Do you love him? And I've heard sometimes we all ask questions in a Bible study or, you know, uh, man, it's, it's kind of hard because, you know what, I've never, I've never seen God or I've never seen Jesus. Can I just say something honestly? The resurrection changes all of that. If the resurrection is true, which when you look at all the facts... It, it weighs in, into the fact that Jesus was resurrected from the dead. And then you look at all the eyewitnesses that saw him and talked with him and spoke with him. It shows that he lived and everything is true. Do you trust him? I pray that you do. And I pray that it will lead you to an inexpressible joy right now. And so what we want to do right now, if you got your Lord's Supper stuff handy, I just want us to celebrate Jesus. I want us to thank Him. I want us to honor Him. Because no matter what happens in this world, no matter how uncertain in this, this world is, we have one thing that is for certain that we know that is guaranteed because of the resurrection of Jesus. We have an eternal inheritance waiting for us when we leave this body. And it's all because of what Jesus Christ did on that cross nearly 2,000 years ago. He took your sin, he took my sin, and he nailed it to that cross. And what Jesus asked us to do, he said, I want you to take this particular meal, this supper, because he was having a full meal, but he said, I want you to take a piece of bread. And when you do that, with, with this in mind, I want you to remember me. I want you to remember what I did for you. And I want you to honor me. 
So we want to do that right now. Jesus, we just thank you for your body. We thank you, Father, that we have this, this avenue to connect with Jesus in a very real, visible way by taking this physical bread that reminds us of Jesus and his body on that cross. Our sins are done. They're done. Thank you, Jesus. And then he took a cup of the fruit of the vine that he told his disciples that this is representative of my blood that I'm going to pour out for you. So when you take it and you drink of it, you remember me. You remember what I did. You remember the blood, my life, that I gave for you so that you can be done with sin. No longer a slave to sin. That no matter what the circumstances you find yourself in, you can live with an inexpressible joy. Thank you, Father, for the gift of your Son, Jesus. And thank you, Jesus, for giving your blood for us. And now, Father, as we get ready to move on with the rest of our day today. Father, I pray that we let the, the resurrection of your son Jesus fuel us. That we always keep it in the forefront of our minds. That we never forget. Because it changes everything. Thank you. And it's in the, son, in the name of your son, Jesus, that we lift up this prayer to you, our Father and our God. Amen. Have a great day. And I love you.